Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eli Nemzer, and today I will be talking about MobX, which is a simple modern state management library. So, as I say the phrase state management solution, uh, you should all be nodding your heads, or at least Jeff and Cassio are hoping you're nodding your heads because we've already been working extensively with a state management solution, right? And that's Redux. Um, so very briefly, since you guys are all already experts on Redux, um, Redux takes a functioning, functional programming approach um, and there are three core principles, right? Store acts as a single source of truth, um, state is read only, and can only be changed by emitting an action, and changes to the state are made by the reducers, which are pure functions. But Redux is by no means the only way to manage state in an application. So enter MobX, um, which is an interesting alternative to Redux, and one that's widely considered to have a lot less boilerplate, and in fact, a quicker learning curve. Um, so unlike Redux, MobX takes an object-oriented approach. Um, and there are four key concepts here that uh, you kind of need to get to know. There are actions, uh, which are the primary means to modify the state. Um, and they take sources of change like user events, you know, like an on click, on submit. Um, and they modify what's called the observable state. And the observable state can kind of be thought of as any value that can be mutated. Um, then there are computed values, which are automatically derived when um, the observable values are modified. And it sort of works like a chain reaction. Um, and then there are reactions, which are kind of like side effects, um, like display changes to the UI. Um, so for more visual learners, a uh, quick refresh on the Redux state lifecycle, right? So you've got your one single store, and you dispatch an action to that store. Um, the store then passes the previous state and that action over your reducers. If you've got multiple reducers, the root reducer is going to combine the reducers into a single state tree, save it to the store, and the store then passes the new state to your React components or UI, which in turn trigger action events. But MobX is a bit different, um, and there's a common analogy that you see when you're learning about MobX that I think was actually pretty helpful, and that's to think of it kind of like an Excel spreadsheet. So like the observable values are sort of like just cells in a spreadsheet where you, know, you could have a number in there, for instance, say five, um, and then you can pass them actions that mutate the state, and that's just sort of like changing the value of the cell, right? Um, and that in turn updates the computed values, which are basically like, for instance, cells that have a formula built into them and would automatically update um, upon the change in a piece of data elsewhere. And then the reactions are sort of just like the UI feature. So that's like if you had a, you know, a table or a chart somewhere that would automatically be updating as the data changes in your Excel sheet. Um, so the key first step to using MobX is to set your state and mark it as observable. But what does that mean and what is going on with that at sign there? Um, the at sign signifies a function decorator, uh, which I'm going to get to in a minute because we haven't really seen that yet. Um, but basically by marking a value as observable, you're signifying that it can change over time and that values derived from it have to update accordingly. So as you can see in this little tiny example here, you import observable and, and then you're setting the state of the application, in this case the price and the uh, quantity. Um, now, computed values are the values that are then derived from the state. So if any value that affects them changes, they change with it. Um, and what's kind of nice here is that everything is synchronous. So like, you know, in Redux, sometimes you, there's a lot of async going on and sometimes it can get confusing with funk and everything. Um, here, you can kind of just think of it again as like a spreadsheet cell. And when you plug in new numbers, the um, other cells that are based on formulas update immediately. Um, so we haven't used function decorators yet um, in class, so I'll discuss them for a second. They're just a little ES6 syntax for calling higher order functions. Um, so when called with another function, they extend that function's behavior without actually modifying it. 
And a minor note here is that you have to like make sure that decorators are enabled in Babel, otherwise the at sign is not going to get recognized. Um, but as you can see, you don't actually need decorators to use MobX. It's just sort of like a shortcut so that you can use classes. Um, it's really not that different. So taking a look at an example of a full-on MobX store, this is for a little to-do app. Um, so in MobX, right, you don't have any action creators or reducer files, but in many cases, you are actually going to structure the app to have multiple stores, which each correspond with a React component or a front-end um, functionality. So the initial state is set up top, right, with the observables. Um, and then you'll notice that there's this function called auto run. And that's a handy little function that's built into MobX that basically creates a reaction um, that runs once. And after that, it automatically reruns whenever there's observable data that was used, the, the, whenever the observable data that was used changes. Um, so here it would like log out the report um, that's a computed value and it would print out the list of to-dos. And then on the React component side, um, this is pretty cool. You just have to apply this observer decorator um, which beneath the hood, what it's doing is wrapping the entire render function of the component inside of an auto run to make sure that any data that is used during the rendering of a component forces a re-rendering when there is a change made. Um, and kind of with MobX, there aren't really like the concept of smart and dumb components. And there's kind of just some magic that goes on behind the scenes that MobX kind of makes them smart um, by making sure that the components are always in sync with the state and re-rendered whenever needed. Um, so the onClick handler here will force the to-do list to update and add a to-do since it's being observed. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, so to wrap it up, um, I'm just going to review some of the key differences between Redux and MobX. So, you know, with Redux, everything is really manual and explicit. Um, you know, to update state, you explicitly dispatch the actions, you subscribe to the store, and it gives you a lot of control that everything's so manual. Um, and because of this, it makes your application predictable, very testable, and easy to reason about. But like, the it kind of comes at a price in that you know you have to write out a lot of boilerplate. Um, there's just a lot more code that you have to write. And with mod X, you just describe these observable values that can be mutated and in turn mutate others. Um, and the action dispatching and the subscribing is totally automatic. So the application is still predictable, but a lot of people complain that it's a little bit more difficult to test and debug, particularly in larger scale um, production environments. Um, that said, there's an easier learning code, and there's definitely, oh, sorry, an easier learning curve, and there's definitely a lot less code to write. Um, so overall, like from the research I did, it seems that MobX is like a really great alternative for small and simple projects. Um, but when you're working with a massive code base, it seems to be easy to run into problems due to the amount of, kind of due to the amount of freedom it gives you, and that it's difficult to, um, to test and debug. Um, but overall, it's just a, uh, cool alternative to know about, and I'm happy to answer questions about it, you know, if you guys want to talk to me later. Um, thanks for listening. <laughs>